Hello, advanced English learners. Welcome back to another native English speaker conversation. I'm joined by the one and only Greg. So happy to have you here today. So happy to be chatting with you, Greg. We always have fun conversations. We in, do. In my opinion, hopefully in your opinion as well. But um, anyway, I want to remind you that these are a great opportunity for you to practice your listening comprehension, to get used to how native speakers speak. We're not really slowing things down for you to give you an opportunity to hear what that sounds like so that you're more able to navigate conversations that are a little bit faster paced because, you know, you're at the advanced English level. So we want to give you those kinds of opportunities. And pay attention to our pronunciation, our connected speech, the vocabulary we use, the expressions we use, because this is all going to start to build upon each other, right? And you're just going to have that nice, strong um, repertoire, right? So that's something to think about. All right, so let's dive into our conversation topic for today, which is what is the future of jobs in regards to how AI might come in, might mm. step in. So what impact will AI have on jobs? Perfect. So let's get into that. All right. So that's a big question. And it's something that we, you know, can definitely percolate over and think about, but not fully answer because it's not at that moment in time yet. It's, it's on the horizon potentially. I would argue in some ways it's already here. Okay, so let's hear, tell me why. Tell me why you think that. Well, let's first start by defining what AI is. Perfect. Right? Uh, AI, artificial. AI stands for artificial intelligence. intelligence. Exactly. And um, we have been, we meaning the scientific community, I'm not part of it, but. Well, you're part of it. You read a lot of scientific <laughs> literature. I find I consume it. That's Greg's hobby. Yes. So um, this, the scientific community has been excited about AI for a very long time, um, as early as, you know, the invention of computers. Yeah. And it's always felt like it's sort of just 10 years away. Far away, yeah. yeah. Or really 10 years? Yeah, it always I, felt like 10, 20 okay. years on, from on any, the horizon. From any moment in time. Yes. Even back in the 80s. Even back, oh, back in the 50s. Even. 50s, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, because computers advance so quickly. That's true. And there's a saying that we often underestimate, we overestimate the power of technology in the short term. We underestimate? We overestimate we over the power of technology in the short term. Okay. And we underestimate the power of technology in the long term. Interesting. So what that often means is we think, think about driving cars. We felt like driving cars were going to be here in the next like two automated, years. automated, yeah. automated cars? Just self-driving cars. Self-driving, okay. Right? Yeah. Um, self-driving cars. We thought they would be here, you know, in two years. And we thought that 10 years ago. Yeah. And we thought that even 15 years ago. Right, So right. we are overestimating it in the short term. Yes. So now it kind of feels like, well, they're never really coming because it always feels like it's two years away and every two years they're not here yet. <laughs> so I guess they're never coming that's when we start to underestimate what they do in the long term. In the mm. long term, we really will have AI-powered cars. It's amazing. And those cars will drive themselves. There will be no steering wheel. And um, you know, anyone who drives as a profession will have to have a different profession because driving will be done by computers. That will happen, and it will completely change the economics of transportation. Uh, it'll completely change um, you know, the, 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 the job market, because a lot of people yeah. do drive yeah. as a profession. Um, and it'll also completely change the, you know, like I said, the, the sort of the economics of that entire industry. Um, so the point is that will have a huge dramatic systemic impact when it happens. We just don't know when it's going to happen. So we start to say, oh, it's never going to happen. And therefore we underestimate it. Absolutely. I love that you, um, you shared that sort of, um, that approach because it's so true, right? Like one minute we're thinking, oh yeah, that's right on the market. Like that's gonna be around the corner and we get excited about it. And we're like, yeah, I don't need to learn how to drive because you know, I'm gonna be driven by the robots. <laughs> but you know, we even see it, you know, when we were in um, Istanbul, we saw that there, the trams, some of the trams did not have conductors. Yep, trains, trains are definitely an trains, example of that. Trains, trams, um, I think in Japan too, when we were in Japan, 
I think there was also no conductor at, at one point. There could have been in some of them, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, that's a very contained yeah, track. You're so on a track. The more, the more constrained, right, the more boundaries there are on a situation, the yeah. easier it is to develop AI um, to operate in that context, yeah. right? The more broad it is, the more ambiguous it is, mm -hmm. the harder it is for AI to operate. For sure. So back to this, the, the initial question that we sort of posed at the beginning of the conversation, are jobs going to get replaced by essentially robots? Which jobs are those? Like what could be, you know, at risk? What are the ones that are not really going to be touched? Um, I think we should talk about that. Uh, you remember you showed me the app the other day with that AI. That was amazing. I don't want to give too much away because I want you to explain it when you type in those keywords. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, Th listen to this. This is crazy. So this has been developed by OpenAI, which is a consortium of um, uh, machine learning developers. Amazing. And they've been working on a project that the most recent iteration was called GPT-3. Okay. Um, and that was this, you could type in any text and it would output some kind of action based on your text. It's basically interpreting what you're writing. Like dog playing basketball, let's just say. Well, oh. well, yes, dog playing basketball, um, but to do what, right? And so okay, yeah. originally GPT-3, you could say, you could have it actually code. So you could say, um, write some code that um, enables someone to input their name okay. and output you know, um, uh, an account, right? A name and email account. And okay. so it'll put together the code. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, text in, text out. Okay. What's really cool is the latest iteration called DALL-E. Spelled uh, D-A-L-L -L dash E. Right. So I think it's a play on two things. WALL-E, which is a famous movie, um, amazing movie. If, if you haven't seen it, please see it. Go do yourself a it's favor. It's a Pixar, phenomenal Pixar robot movie. Beautiful. Yeah. So that's WALL-E. And then the other is Salvador Dali. Dali. The I artist. Think it's the, yes. Yeah, I think it's a, a play on both of those yeah, things. Yeah, he but. was a surrealist artist. Yeah. And really if you cool. look at the art, well, well, let's explain what this does. Okay. So what you do is you type in, it's called Dali. And what you do is you type in um, a few different keywords. You could say a bear eating soup in the woods. And it will produce cool. <laughs> a picture of a bear eating soup in the woods. Now, if you think about it, there are many different ways to represent that. For sure, for is sure. Is it a wild, angry looking bear or is it a fun, fluffy looking teddy bear? Is it a photograph? Like, is it a photorealism? Is it surrealism? Is it a painting? Is right, it... is it an illustration, right? Yeah, is it, yeah, like is it photoreal or is it an illustration? Because when, when you thought of those three things in your head, you painted a very different picture in your mind's eye than what I did in my mind's eye and what Greg did in his mind's eye, right? Exactly. It's a very different thing for all of us. Yes, and so what this AI does is it has its own mind. And the mind has been built on billions and billions of different images that have been labeled. Um, and so it has a bajillion different images of bears, of soup, of woods, yeah. of sitting. And then the combinations right? are endless. And it'll just pair a bunch of those together. And so you could type it in five different times and get five different images. Amazing. So it. When you look at it, it's really incredible. You should um, add the, the link to the show yeah, notes I'll, just I'll so people it. can play around with the, the gallery. It's, just it's actually so not cool. open to everyone yet. But why are we spending so much time on this? Well, this is an example of how AI is actually producing real creative content. When you look at it, it used to be the, the assumption was AI could do boring, repetitive tasks. Right. So thinking of like, you know, um, tasks that maybe require heavy, heavy machinery or are repetitive or like, so dangerous tasks and boring tasks. Exactly. Boring tasks, meaning repetitive, like data entry or, you know, stocking stuff on shelves, right? Stuff yeah. that's very straightforward um, and easy to program. What we're discovering is that AI is even capable of uh, I would say creative tasks, tasks that you would expect only a human mind could accomplish. Um, and, the, and if that seems far-fetched to you, I really encourage you to check out uh, the Dolly Gallery. Yeah. Um, again, it's not open for, for public use yet. But you can see um, some of the things that they showcase. Yeah, and it's really incredible. Now, 
if you're a creator, <laughs> us, <laughs> you might be a little worried, like, oh no, I'm gonna lose my job. You know, even artists uh, are gonna lose their jobs. The reality is that isn't the case. Um, Phew. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason I would argue it's, that's not the case yeah. um, is actually we just watched a show called Westworld. Oh, great show. It's on HBO. Great show. A little violent. Yeah, um, not, I close my eyes for those parts. Not for the kids. To be honest. But it is, yeah. conceptually, brings up a lot of important concepts. Yeah. And one of the, one of the things is that uh, one of the protagonists, one of the main characters, um, uses AI to build these stories, right? Yeah. And so she uh, tells the computer sort of what's in her head. And the computer takes what she's saying and then kind of fills in the gaps to create a cohesive narrative. So what is that? That's human Powered, powered AI. AI. And I think that's really where the future is. So so a human is powering it, right? Telling it, giving exactly. guidance, giving some instructions, parameters, uh, criteria, right? We could go on and on with those kinds of concepts. But then AI is doing the output. They're pro it's producing it. Yeah. So the AI kind of does the grunt work, right? Yeah, the heavy lifting. The, the human comes up with the ideas, yeah. um, spontaneous ideas. Yeah. And the AI can interpret them. Um, but it's ultimately just doing what the, the human sort of guided it to do. Yeah. And in that way, it can really, it can empower, think about a video game, yeah. right? We could get to a point where a video game developer isn't someone who can actually code, you know, the, the, the different vectors and all the different mathematical physics of, you know, exploding rocks and stuff. Instead, all the video game developer does is come up with an idea. Right. He, he tells it to the, or she tells it to the, the AI, and the AI does the grunt work of putting it all together behind the scenes. So they have to be able to communicate that idea, right? Yes. And then we're back to the importance of communication. That's true. The better you can articulate your ideas, right. the more effectively you can use the AI to your benefit. So big picture, we learned two things, right? Communication skills are of the utmost importance, and they're not going anywhere, because we need to be able to communicate with humans and also robots. And then secondly, if you're, you know, a creative or you have creative tasks that you do, don't worry because, you know, you're still going to probably be in demand for that kind of thing. Yeah, I wouldn't even say probably. I think your your skills will be even more even in demand. Even more valued. Right? right. If, if you're doing Hopefully. something that's sort of boring and repetitive yeah. for a job, then that's when you probably want to start looking at developing skills beyond that, right? Because in the next five, 10 years, there's a chance if it's easy to program, it's gonna get replaced. Yeah. So just being aware, it's not that you have to panic, yeah, but, but you know, start some... star starting to look at other ways yeah. to sort of expand your skill set into um, more creative, um, more interpretive, um, abstract types of roles yeah. could benefit you because that way you can take advantage of some of the cool new tools coming out. And be at the forefront of that new trend because it's gonna happen, it's just a matter of time, like when, right? And like it or not, yeah. in, the, in the near term, it's most likely that these tools will be taking in the language in English. Yes. Um, it's just most yes. of the reality is most of the development in AI is happening in English, whether it's the research, yeah. whether it's the interpreters. And so learning English uh, can be very powerful, uh, a powerful way to, to make the most of these tools. Eventually, they will be converted to virtually any language, which is great. But if you want to get sort of that edge, that competitive edge, yeah. Having a good handle on English can give you that advantage. And you're you're there. You're getting there, right? The, the, you're you're at the level where if you're able to understand and follow this conversation, you are on the right track. So keep it up because it's going to be even more important than it is already currently, right? <laughs> Amazing. I mean, I, I we could talk on and on about this. Yes, we could. We'll probably do a second part of this, um, but. You know, it's something to consider, as Greg said, start thinking about ways that you can enrich yourself even more. You're already doing that with the Advanced English Podcast, which is awesome. So keep it up. And then for the communication, you should definitely check out our explearning.co uh, communications channel. It's also on YouTube. It's also on podcasts. But you can get all of the resources if you just go to explearning.co, and I'm going to link it below for you. And then think about, you know, creativity. How are you going to leverage that? Um, in the future or currently, just something to keep in mind, right? Keep percolate, right? Have that percolate in the back of your mind so that, you know, you're, you're thinking about it slowly, but you're not, you know, necessarily rushing into anything. It's just something to be aware of. So 
All right, well, that's it from us today. If you want another, you know, two-parter on this, let us know in the comments below. Let us know in the Q&A on Spotify. You can find it under the community tab. We love hearing from you. Be sure to share this podcast and this YouTube channel and our website with anyone who wants to improve their English skills and their communication skills. And don't forget to check out Exploring because the two together, Advanced English and Exploring, is a very powerful combination. So definitely check that out. And we're going to see you right back here for another lesson and conversation very soon. All right. Bye for now.